Sinead and we're in Studio 2 at the Sheffield Live radio station. Um, the basic purpose of this video is just to show you how to use the equipment in a radio studio, mainly for new presenters coming in. Um, the first thing that I will say is things are a little bit different here than they are at some commercial stations or larger stations. Uh, here, the presenters do everything. We do the technical side and we present the show as well. You'll find at a commercial radio station, nine times out of ten, there's somebody in a booth doing all that for you and you're just speaking and enjoying your show. Unfortunately, here, we've got to muck in. Okay, so let's have a look at what equipment we use here. Um, so in the Sheffield Live studio, we have two control desks. Um, we also have a computer system with a program called Myriad on it, which I'm going to talk about in a different video. Uh, we have a couple of microphones. The other studio has uh, three microphones. And we also have an extremely high-tech professional twin CD player. Now, a lot of shows now just bring a laptop in, and if there's a live DJ, they use the decks. I still use the professional twin CD player. I think it makes a good show. Some people actually play music from Myriad, that's where the jingles are stored as well, so that can be quite simple. Um, but the first thing that I will say is, try not to worry about all these buttons, because actually we don't use them all, we only use some of them. Um, and the main thing we need to concentrate really on is this control panel here. So I'm going to show you what this is about. Okay, so we're just looking at this desk here on the left. Now, somebody's handily labelled it presenter mic, guest mic 1, guest mic 2, guest mic 3 and guest mic 4. Now, we've only got two microphones in this studio, so we're just bothered about these two faders here. Now, this one's your presenter mic fader, which when you're doing the show will go up. The guest mic, when the guest's talking, you'll also put that up. Or you may just leave it up if it's a talk show for the whole show. But before we actually start the show, the most important thing to do is to put your headphones on and pre-fade the microphones. Now this makes sure that the levels are correct for the whole show. Now this is the button here, this yellow button that says PF. This is the button you want to use to pre-fade your presenter mic. Now you press this button and on the right hand control panel is an output monitor, LEDs, and we're going to look at that to make sure that the levels are correct. I'll show you that in just a minute. But what you want to do to adjust the levels is use this button here. It says gain, and obviously you just turn it up or down accordingly. Okay, so on the desk on the right here is the output monitor I was talking about. So we're looking at these LEDs to see what the output is. Now, we're kind of hoping it'll stick around the middle, the amber, because if it goes up into the red up here, um, it's just too loud. It might be a little bit distorted. It's not a good output. Likewise, if it's sticking around very low in the green, that's going to be too quiet. So we're really hoping it stays around zero in the amber. At least that's how we do it at this radio station. It might be slightly different to other stations, but you just use your gain on the left-hand control panel, as I showed you earlier, to change this. And it, the same applies when you're using CDs as well. Okay, now if you're a little bit old school, like me, you might want to use the twin CD player. Um, a lot of people do, actually. Now, it's pretty simple to use. What we want to do is put our CD in. It doesn't play immediately, it just cues it up. Um, you have the option of single or off. Uh, if it's on single, it's just going to play one track. If you've uh, released that button um, it'll play right through. Sometimes me and Graham, my co-host, do that when we're off to make a cup of tea, but don't tell anyone. Um, but usually you have it on single. Now don't press play just yet, you need to make sure that the right fader is up on the desk for that particular CD. Now then we'll just go back to the desk I showed you earlier here. Now on this particular desk this is the corresponding fader. So you make sure that that fader's up and then all you want to do really is press play. So I've actually dragged in Graham Marshall today. We used to do a show together, well, for 10 years. 10 years, <laughs> yeah. that's a long time to do one radio it show, isn't it? It is definitely mm. a long time. Um, because sometimes in the studio, uh, it's not going to be just yourself. You're going to have guests in, or you might have a co-presenter, and you're going to need to utilise other microphones. Uh, this is a great mic, actually, condenser mic. It picks pretty much everything up. 
but Graham's using a dynamic mic. Um, not quite as good, uh, you just need to be a little bit more strict uh, with where you tell your guests to sit. Um, the first thing you need to do, as I've said before, is put your headphones on. And once you've pre-faded your own mic, as uh, we described earlier, the next thing you do, uh, I'm going to do Graham's mic. So if I just press pre-fade here, and if you could just speak into your microphone for me, Graham. Hi, I'm Graham, and uh, this is me testing the microphone. Um, let's hope it's working okay, otherwise we're going to look a bit daft. Okay, and, uh, so Graham is, no, it's not too bad, I'm looking at the output monitor on the right here, but what I would say is, Graham, if you can just make sure you're about six, about six inches away from the microphone. About there? Yeah, at all times. Mm. Uh, that way we're going to have a good level, it's going to be around the amber, perhaps touching on the red when he gets a little bit excited or starts laughing, <laughs> uh, but not too often. Now, there's a few pitfalls that have happened in the studio. In fact, I'll let you, I'll let you describe. Have you got some tips? Well, yeah, there's a few things that we've experienced. One is to always remember that when you need to put the microphones down, for example, as soon as you start playing some music, you pull the microphone faders down straight away, and you have to think about that and make sure you do do it. 100%. Because everybody I know who's broadcast has left the microphones up at some point or another. Oh, we have in the early yeah. days. In fact, I was listening to the radio only a few days ago to this station and a, and a presenter who has got more experience than us left his microphone up at the beginning of his show. Luckily, he was on his own, so he wasn't talking. But you could hear him coughing and spluttering every two minutes over the two tracks that he played. And you heard the door go a couple of times as well. He got away with it. But I could tell what he'd done. Uh, if he'd have had a, get, a guest or a co-presenter in with him, they could have said something inappropriate oh. and probably would have. Well, we have. <laughs> I remember in the early days of our show. Um, we... If you're playing music tracks and you're going to be talking after each track, you need to set the CD player so it's on single track play. Uh, and true. sometimes people forget to do that. Now, if you forget to do that and you've not got your headphones on, oh, you're okay. listening to the track... Uh, with the fader up and that, and you decide to start talking, you put your microphone faders up, and that instantly cuts out the monitors in the studio. That's right. And completely unbeknown to you, the next track is, of music is playing. So you're talking, you might be interviewing somebody, and in yeah. the background there could be some thrash metal. Yeah, <laughs> and it'll be as loud group. as it would normally be, so it, you can't hear the person talking. And the people yeah. in the studio are completely unaware of that because they've not got the headphones on. Yeah. I've experienced, I've seen that happen, yeah, yeah. and I had to it's ring in. There was one show where they did it for about... Yeah. The other tip I've got is, uh, although guests usually do what they're told, um, often people will start looking at other people when they're talking about them. Yeah, so they'll say, say a band's in the studio, and they say, yeah, Judd, the drummer, did whatever, and they've turned their head away from the microphone, and instantly that goes quieter. Mm -hmm. And as they turn back, in the middle of a sentence, it goes louder. And then they turn back and look at Judd again, and it's gone quiet, and they turn back again. That is terrible, and it, well, it's also difficult to edit to make it sound right later. Right. Um, so that this is was an old-fashioned band, wasn't it, Judd? Judd, <laughs> yeah. This was yeah. radio tips yeah. from the 60s. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it was a spoon-playing trio. <laughs> but no, I mean, you get the idea, and I've seen that happen quite a lot. Yeah, no, so you've right. really got to watch the uh, bands or guests because they're not experienced and they don't know what's yeah, really of course, happening. Yeah. But the other thing is, as I said before, make sure that the microphone faders are always down when you don't want to be heard. And um, anything else, you, I, I, the other thing I also remember to do is when I come into the studio, that business I mentioned about the single play button on the CD player. If you play CDs, you're almost certainly going to be talking in between tracks. So I always come in and make sure that the single play symbol is on the CD player. So I know that it will automatically stop after each track. And it just saves a lot of faff and a lot of unprofessionalism later. I am also going to do a training video on Myriad, which is the computer software we use in the studio. However, I haven't got round to that just yet, uh, but I'm going to get on with it. Thanks for coming in, Graham. Yeah, anyway. Cheers, you're welcome. welcome.